Is Pluto a normal planet? What is happening on Pluto? Is there underwater life on Pluto? Pluto was once a planet. Today, it is not. That status may change in the near future, but this world is far too interesting for us to focus on mere nomenclature alone. For did you know that Pluto's formation is like nothing else we've seen in the solar system? And what's more, this so-called dwarf planet may possess a secret deep beneath its surface. A secret which may illuminate us on the makeup of many other objects on the far fringes of our solar system. So let's find out what's going on beneath the surface of this cold, icy world as we answer the question, is Pluto a normal planet? What is happening on Pluto? Is there underwater life on Pluto? A History of Pluto From its discovery in 1930 to its demotion in 2006, Pluto has fascinated both astronomers and the public alike. For most of this time, it remained the most distant planet we'd ever clasped eyes on, and it wasn't until 1992 that we first confirmed the detection of exoplanets outside our solar system. To give you some context, that's the same year Home Alone 2 came out, George Bush's dad was president of America, and the first text message was sent. It read Merry Christmas, with a second message being sent being, new number, who dis? The existence of a ninth planet in our solar system had been speculated for some time prior to Pluto's discovery, with a rich Bostonian called Percival Lowell leading the most prominent search via Lowell Observatory. Apparently he named it after some guy he knew. Lowell died before Pluto's existence was confirmed, but years afterwards it was realized that surveys taken at the observatory during his lifetime bore evidence of Pluto which everyone had failed to notice. Lowell Observatory then took 14 years to officially confirm Pluto's existence, with the honor going to 23-year-old astronomer Clyde Tombaugh. The analysis of older observation records showed that the earliest detection of what would later turn out to be Pluto was made in 1909. And stories like this make you wonder what we've detected today which we may only discover tomorrow. Not literally tomorrow, but you know what I mean. Mm, that sounded profound in my head. Pluto, which takes its name from the Greek mythical god of the underworld, went on to inspire the name of a famous cartoon dog and a radioactive element. Such was the excitement regarding this newly discovered world. Yet, over the years, it seems Pluto's status has been gradually downgraded. Like one of those insecure guys who dates a hot chick and undermines her confidence because he knows deep down he's batting way out of his league. Pluto was estimated at being seven times Earth's mass by Percival Lowell, but this was revised to one Earth mass in 1930, one-tenth of Earth's mass in 1948, and today it's calculated as having just one 459th the mass of our Earth. Hmm, Pluto needs some whey protein, bruh. This posed astronomers a problem when in 2005, a so-called tenth planet of the solar system was discovered in the form of Eris. Eris is larger than Pluto. So, brief consideration was given to expanding the number of official planets in the solar system to 10. Instead, due to their failure to meet certain criteria, it was decided that neither Pluto nor Eris could be classified as planets. The pair were downgraded and placed into a new classification of minor planets, which means they cannot drink and need parental permission to get a tattoo. But such worlds are no less interesting than ordinary planets, because once you start to look under its surface, you'll see that Pluto is by no means a normal place. Comet Con Pluto, like Eris, is a trans-Neptunian object, which means it identifies as both the god of the sea and a planet and is very brave and beautiful. Oh, also it means that it exists beyond Neptune's orbit. That's what a scientist would say. Anyway, between Neptune and the rest of space, you'll find a huge ring of icy objects known as the Kuiper Belt. The belt is home to three officially recognized minor planets. Haumea, Makimaki, and our old friend Pluto, whose orbit takes it from the innermost part through a maelstrom of icy rock to the outer reaches of the Kuiper Belt. Pluto's location is interesting because a recent theory has emerged explaining how this minor planet formed. On May 23, 2018, scientists from the Southwest Research Institute revealed how they had used data from NASA's New Horizons mission to develop the giant comet model of planetary formation. 
Their theory is that Pluto's existence may have been the result of a large number of comets smashing together. And this fits with earlier observations made of the comet 67 p churyumov gerasimenko by the Rosetta mission. In 2014, the Rosetta Philae robotic probe touched down upon 67P to complete the first landing of a spacecraft on a comet. This monumental event was slightly disrupted by some morons who chose to focus on Dr. Matt Trailer's badass shirt, but once the offense tourists had moved on to another cause, the comet's makeup was analyzed and its chemical composition documented. Comet 67P, which used to be part of the Kuiper Belt, seems to be nitrogen-rich, just like a region of Pluto called the Sputnik Planitia. The Planitia is a huge glacier found in Pluto's northern hemisphere, and its estimated nitrogen content is consistent with the amount it should possess if Pluto had been formed by the collisions of comets like 67P. And what's even more intriguing is that if this model is correct, Pluto may once have had a subsurface liquid ocean, and it still might today oceans apart. Dr. Christopher Glein is the co-author of the aforementioned Southwest Research Institute paper, and in a statement, he was quoted as saying, Our research suggests that Pluto's initial chemical makeup, inherited from cometary building blocks, was chemically modified by liquid water, perhaps even in a subsurface ocean. This theory builds on previous work which has considered the potential existence of liquids beneath the surface of Pluto. In 2016, NASA identified what may turn out to be cryovolcanoes on Pluto, which are volcanoes that erupt water, ammonia, or methane, and totally sound like the kind of thing that the Night King would bathe in. The Southwest team believes that the presence of liquid water may explain the low abundance of carbon monoxide on the planet, and it's thought possible that subsurface liquid water oceans could have destroyed this compound. Competing theories regarding Pluto's composition suggest that something else may exist beneath Pluto's surface, with Washington University's William McKinnon suggesting that the Sputnik Planitia may sit atop a syrupy ocean of ammonia, some 600 miles wide and 50 meters thick, which might harbor some unique forms of life. McKinnon was also quoted as saying that this ocean is no place for germs, much less fish or squid or any life as we know it. But as with the methane seas on Titan, Saturn's main moon, it raises the question of whether some truly novel life forms could exist in these exotic, cold liquids. At a December meeting of the American Geophysical Union, McKinnon also stated his belief that there could be a gooey layer of asphalt-like organic matter accompanying this ocean, with this material most likely comprising a great deal of carbon, a fundamental building block of life on Earth. But forget about the possibility of weird life forms on Pluto for just a minute. I just want to know why Bill McKinnon describes planets like some sort of perfect brownie. Gooey? Syrupy? What next, Billy? Pluto is a decadent, luscious world with a moist, caramel-esque center and a decadent crust slathered in a tasty methane sand. Ah, oh, damn, I just made myself hungry. Oh, and that last part wasn't a joke, by the way. Just as this video was being made, it was announced that Pluto is covered in dunes made of methane ice sand. Do you want to build a snowman? No, not, not really. Hopefully, we'll find out more about Pluto in 2019, when the New Horizons probe flies past another Kuiper Belt object called MU69. The study of this asteroid will be used to inform our discussions on how Pluto and other bodies in the solar system form and it could hint at the existence of other Pluto-like worlds with oceans and cryovolcanoes out there in the Kuiper Belt. But McKinnon believes we'll need more if we want to confirm that subsurface oceans exist. And he said that such theories could be investigated by a future orbiter mission to Pluto, adding that it's up to the next generation to pick up where New Horizons left off. For now, we'll have to be content with discussions over Pluto's planetary status because did you know that the International Astronomical Union is being asked to reconsider its definition of a planet? It's true, and we're going to explore how this might happen and the potential negative connotations of this rethink in our bonus video, What is a Planet? Which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and all of our bonus content 
which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then that's bullshit. We know you wanted more. Strange mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth, to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek, but which only lead to more questions. That's why we just up the stakes. Chemicals of reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is, but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip, as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, did. Already, though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality visited by only a select few whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible. And in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video, Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strange mysteries.